Hello everyone and welcome to my little corner of the internet. My name is Michael and I'm bitten by a radioactive book. Today it's all about steampunk. That's exciting. It's one of my favorite genres, but sometimes a genre not everybody knows that much about. So I'd like to change that and um, this is my first part of a planned five-part guide to the genre. So what can you expect? In this first part I will give you a bit of an overview about the origins of steampunk, of the elements steam and punk, of the settings, of the genres that yeah, kind of um, uh, cross over with steampunk a lot, and then I will give you a brief overview about some themes that I will look into in the other four parts of the guide and in those parts I will also recommend some um, books that relate to that uh, to those th uh, to those themes. Careful now. Language. So let's start with the origin of steampunk. Steampunk is considered science fiction or speculative fiction as we say today. And it is because it was. By the time the books were written, for example, like 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea uh, by Jules Verne or The Time Machine by H.G. Uh, Wells, um, they were actually writing in their own society, in their own context, and it was science fiction for them, what they wrote. For us, when we now look back, um, the, the science didn't come out the way they thought it would be, so it's, it's not actually, um, it's, it's kind of a historical science fiction, and therefore we have this, um, yeah, uh, this concept of steampunk for, for the genre. And there are also some titles that may be more often associated with the horror genre, like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson or uh, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Um, these have actually some steampunk elements because of the, of the science uh, involved uh, and the, the concept and, and themes like the morality um, of, um, of science, for example. So you can say the, the origin is based in, in those kind of stories. But within the last decade, uh, steampunk saw a little renaissance and it's become a quite popular genre once again. But although it deals with the past, it still belongs to the science fiction genre due to its origin. So let's look at the two elements of steampunk because you have steam and punk. So let's talk about that. I think the steam element is the most or the more prominent element and maybe that the first thing you, you think about when you think about steampunk. You think of airships, of gadgets, of inventions, mad scientists, stuff like stuff like that. And this is of course the the science part, the, the steam part. The the alternate reality that never happened in our society and um, I guess this is the most prominent thing that you think of when you think about steampunk. But the punk element is essential to the genre as well because uh, you won't find a good steampunk story with at least one of certain social um, um, or cultural or philosophical themes that make up the punk element. And the punk element, I will go into that a bit later, um, has much to do with social upheaval, uh, changes in society, uh, a political restructuring of nature, uh, of, of nations, not of nature. But they wish that the mad scientists would have loved to change something about nature but no the the punk element is actually uh, about change in 
the society. Let's talk settings briefly. Um, the most common setting you will see in steampunk is of course London. Steampunk is set in the Victorian era and the heart of the Victorian era was of course its uh, capital London. And so you will see many 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 stories about, uh, uh, set in the steampunk genre that are happening in London. Um, and give the genre this this feel of being foggy, of being in the dark, of being a bit stiff and um, wrapped up in, in social norms uh, and that all happens in that in that setting. But there's also a second setting uh, which is quite different from the London setting and it's called the Weird West. If you remember the movie Wild Wild West with Will Smith, um, it had like a huge clockwork spider, it had like a lot of gadgets, and this, I won't say that inspired the whole genre, but um, but to a certain degree it, it did, kind of. So we're seeing uh, the US and the Wild West as an additional setting where a lot of steampunk novels um, take place. Now, what stories can you expect from steampunk? As we go back to the origins, steampunk stories were often adventure stories and still are. So, you will encounter like the typical quest story or uh, the story where somebody from the civilized world goes into the wild and uh, tries to discover some mysteries of the past. That is, uh, that is one of the themes uh, uh, or uh, of the kind of stories in steampunk you will find. Another classical one inspired by the Jack the Ripper uh, murders happening in London is obviously the murder mystery. Many, many steampunk novels have a murder mystery as their central element or at least of one of the elements of the story. And then there's also kind of a subgenre for the heart. Um, we have a, in, an interesting movement in the last couple of years that um, paranormal Roman stories that are normally set in urban fantasy also are transferred to the Victorian era and told as a steampunk novel. So if you are interested in the paranormal Roman genre, there will be some authors like Gay Carragher or uh, Cindy Spencer uh, Pape that, um, that do actually um, paranormal Romans but in a steampunk corset. Um, it's, it's kind of interesting and uh, sometimes uh, I, I wasn't aware of that. Uh, so I'm, I'm not the typical romance reader, even if it's paranormal romance. I, I do that occasionally, but it's not my, my most go-to genre. Let's leave it at that. And so sometimes I'm really surprised when I didn't read that much about the book and start something and read and read and then I'm like, oh, now they're getting naked and that is going on. I wasn't, okay, no, no. That, that, let's roll with it. So that, that kind of happens. And for the last part, let's talk themes. Themes that goes back a bit to talking about the punk element in steampunk, because um, the themes are not necessarily the central point of the story, but you will find at least one or two of the themes I'm going to mention in almost every steampunk novel. And I think those themes are often underrated in, in reviews or uh, when the genre is talked about. So I want to make the themes um, actually the, the central part of my steampunk guide. And I picked out like four themes and I will make separate um, videos for each of the themes and go into them. Um, so I just give you a little overview of the four themes I picked. The first will be the social upheaval theme. 
because uh, with uh, with in, uh, industrialization uh, happening at the time, uh, many uh, uh, nations changed from from feudal uh, societies or not, not feudal, uh, but uh, but mon uh, uh, monarchies uh, to to republics. The people demanded more rights. Um, uh, so, so social upheaval and and, and change in leadership um, is one of the main themes of steampunk. A second one, of course, is gender equality. With the suffragette movement, uh, 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 women started uh, to demand more rights in society. Um, um, the corset that you see in steampunk is actually not only a, a piece of clothing is more of a statement about uh, female oppression in, in the time because you um, you tie someone in into so many social norms and limitations up to the point that the person can't breathe anymore and that is of course the most basic human need so the corset is actually kind of a metaphor for female oppression and you will see many many steampunk novels with um, strong female leads that go up against those social norms and this kind of oppression so I want to make gender equality my second steampunk theme. The third will be imperialism because of course the the genre is set in the Victorian area and that was kind of the hype of the British imperialistic um, movements uh, all over the world. They were present everywhere, they had colonies uh, everywhere and uh, I'd like to show a bit that uh, that this kind of imperialism still um, still is relevant in our times and uh, um, has certain yeah, ramifications and originating in that era mm -hmm. and um, this is something that steampunk helps us to understand mm -hmm. so I want to make imperialism my third um, theme for the genre. And the last one will be moral, morality in politics and science. Um, the Victorian era was an, was an era where many older concepts like Hobbes or Kant were picked up again and, uh, uh, and discussed and new ones like Wittgenstein or um, Descartes um, e emerged and, uh, uh, and many, um, many questions were raised um, about how the human being should actually behave and the starting point for this discussion was Charles Darwin because with his theories about the human origin um, nothing what the society knew about religion um, was kind of safe anymore. The uh, creation um, was yeah heavily under fire uh, uh, it wasn't it wasn't a sure thing anymore and so with the assumption that there might not be a god uh, what does this mean for human moralities if there's not a god that judges you then isn't uh, isn't morality something you might don't have to stick with and this translates in steampunk into uh, mostly the the science because uh, the mad scientist one of the typical villainous tropes in steampunk is actually as mad as he is because uh, he has no moral boundaries or he thinks that he has no moral boundaries and so the the concepts of uh, just uh, ends justifying the means and having no moral boundaries um, collide with other concept of uh, uh, that morality is actually a part of being a human. So uh, I'd like to make uh, moral and morality, especially in science, my fourth uh, topic of or my fourth theme um, for discussing steampunk. So you can look forward to these more in-depth videos about these four, uh, four themes. Um, let me know 
if you have read some steampunk, if you like to pick up some steampunk, uh, what are your assumptions of the genre. So tell me in the comments and if you like that introduction to the guide, hit the like button. If you want to see more of me, hit the subscribe button and have a pleasant day. I hope you get bitten by a really good book too and see you next time. Bye bye.